Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. This is a new year, new us. Let me stop lying. Still say more us. You know, <laughs> we we care about putting money in people's pockets and most of all, keeping money in people's pockets. The people don't really understand. That's like the hard part of it, keeping the money. Making the money is fairly easier than it is to keep the money. But like I said, it's a new year. We're going to keep on bringing the same content, just doing it better. Um, trying to bring the channel up to speed and the people up to speed on what's going on in the economy, how to make money, where's opportunities to make money, opportunities to keep money, invest money, and make more money for your families to change how we want to, you know, take care of our family tree moving forward. You know, the economy situation, things change, is very fluid, and we're here to keep you uh, up to date on what's going on and see how you can navigate these markets and how you can uh, make it better for yourself and better for your family. With all that being said, Alex, let's jump into it. Yeah, no, with this video, I kind of just, I know it's going to be like lighthearted and comical, but because we're going to be going back and forth on stories with the point of the video, people putting too much emphasis on titles rather than, you know, what a person has actually done, the actions they've taken, what they've accomplished in life. And the thing, I hope I can get the viewers, like get their gears turning in their head to really think to themselves on this because people seem to be so blindfolded by titles and and sometimes it kind of jeopardizes certain situations in their life like if you're trying to buy a house people think that you need a realtor and that name realtor convinces them that they're working with someone professional and in reality the realtor is just like a car salesman they just want their commission they just want to get in get out and they're not really going to be even helping you in the process and they're not required to be part of the home buying process um people put too much trust in financial advisors and financial advisors they mo most of the times they don't know what's best for you so just things like that um you know i'll hand it off to you kirby i know you got a lot of stories of people and their titles and you know especially in your shoes probably people preferring to listen to someone you're trying to give advice to somebody and they prefer to listen to someone that has a title rather than you who's actually done things and you know did the work right and and just breaking that down like you said real estate agents most real estate agents real estate agents only the top let's say 10 percent, five percent of real estate agents really make money in the market they really know what's going on most real estate agents don't know how to deal with investors at all they don't know it comes down to the numbers. We don't care about price per square foot and things of that nature. We care about cash flow per square foot. Uh, but they don't know how to, you know, unpack that. Uh, a real estate agent, I mean, people need to look it up. The barrier to entry to real estate agent is very low. That's why so many real estate agents, you probably got friends and family members saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a real estate agent now. The test is too easy. I mean, they, they really don't know nothing. I mean, they can tell you about a neighborhood they could tell you when a roof was uh put on or something like that but they really don't understand the financial background and landscape of real estate in general but when you go on to things like stock brokers and things like that their job is like you said salespeople. they're convincing you because they have a title you know they might have a cpf or uh a money management license you know they probably even passed the series six series seven <clears throat> or some of those other uh financial uh, packages that you got to do to be able to scam people out of money and I know a lot of them and most of the people that I know let me take it back 99% of the people I know that's in that business don't invest their own money their investment is to convince people to give them their money because they get big commissions uh, on a yearly basis and a percentage gain basis off of the people's money so their job is to convince you to invest your money with them uh, a quick story with that uh, I remember my brother, he was uh, leaving a job and he had a 401k and then he called me and asked me, hey, what what should he do with it? And then I said, what you're going to do is roll it over to a traditional IRA. And then I gave him a brokerage platform. I'm not going to put him on blast on this channel, but I gave him name to a couple of brokerage platforms. Uh, he called them, reached out. And then I told my brother before he called him, I said, they're going to convince you to do something else. Don't listen. And then he called them and like clockwork, they said, oh, well, this is a nice amount of money. You should just let us manage it. And then my brother called me on three way and he called me on three way. And then he was like, hey, uh, this guy is telling me to 
I'll let them manage the money. Don't do what you said. And then I said, you need to put in the SP 500. And because they can't beat the SP 500 on a, you know, annual basis over a long period of time. And then the guy that was trying to convince my brother, he was quiet. And then I asked him, like, hey, do you got anything to say against that? And he was like, well, I can't talk to you unless I get authorization from, from my brother's name. And so my brother was like, yeah, you got authorization to talk to him. And then he just started stumbling and mumbling over words because he knew he couldn't beat the thing. I was like, now you're going to charge this, this thief to manage his funds, but you can't even beat the index fund that has lower fees. So how do that benefit them? So all in all, we put it in the S&P 500 uh, index fund. And then, you know, fast forward, we got the triple his money or something like that in a you know, decent amount of time. But that's what these brokers are for. They're called stock brokers. They're here to make you broker and they're going to make more money off your commissions than you make off the investments that they do. And that's just how it works out. Um, but so Alex, what were some other situations where you've seen people, you know, use titles to benefit themselves or people get misguided by titles? Yeah, I mean... The biggest one I see right now is with like realtors, real estate agents. Um, I know like the first I was when I was first looking for a rental property, um, the real estate agent that I spoke with, she came off of Zillow. So I was like, I'm on Zillow and I I uh, you had told me use the seller's agent and I couldn't figure out how to actually like contact the seller's agent on Zillow. So then it was like. It was like, do you want to speak with the realtor or whatever? And so I click like the button and then a realtor contacts me. So I'm thinking like, oh, that's the that's the seller's agent. And then it turns out like she wasn't the seller's agent. And I ended up telling her at the end, basically, like, unless you can guarantee me that my offer is not going to be misconstrued by you being in the deal, you know, if I want to make a lower offer, Unless you can promise me that the selling agent is going to basically get, get me the deal I want, then I don't I don't need you. Or can it, can you prove to me that you know that you won't be of any like you're not going to hinder me from making the best offer? And she was like, well, and she just retracted and just basically like she didn't admit to it, like saying, yeah, if I'm in the deal that I'm not going to be able to get you the best offer. But she knew what I was saying is that the seller's agent, you're dealing with just them. You, they get the full commission, so they're more likely to push your offer. She understood that that was the reality and backed off on it. One thing, though, we were talking about this earlier, and it's kind of like a little bit off topic. But people like with using titles, when they know somebody that has done something and they want to use that in my life i have always surrounded myself with people that have done those things and i get the question a lot of like oh you're so young how have you accomplished so much and really it's just instead of going around telling people oh i know this person i know that person they do this they do that i just listen to them and absorb their information and try to learn what i can to apply it to my life that is one thing I've noticed in my life, but a lot of people, they rather have like that, like friend in their pocket, like, oh, I got this dude. I, I know this dude that makes millions. He's my boy. We go out to dinner once a year, like rather than actually right. learning from them. That's my experience with, with that. I don't, but I, I don't know with, I, if you have a similar experience. I like, I like the, yeah, no, I, I like the fact that you brought that up um, because I know people that, you know, net worth is, you know, eight, nine figures. And I know time is money. And, you know, they come down to Florida or whatever, and, you know, they want to have dinner. I never talk about just going to dinner with them. But what I do is when I'm at dinner or when I converse with them, I just be like, hey, give me an hour of your time. I just want to ask you questions. And I'm just trying to drain every ounce of knowledge out of them as possible. I mean, I'm not asking them for a penny. I'm not asking them to ever invest with me. I'm not ever asking, say, hey, I got this business idea. Will you fund me? None of that stuff. 
I'm just absorbing the information. I want to know, hey, how to do this, how to do this, how to do this. What's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? Because that information is more valuable than anything that they can provide me. Me name dropping their name in business meetings or anything like that. I just need to know the process. And once you give me the process, once you give me the steps, I'm just going to execute. Because they've already been through the ups and downs and the roadblocks. Um, and I never go parade myself like, yeah, I have billionaire friends. I don't know. I'm trying to get there. Uh, I'm going to drain them for all the information because the truth of it, eventually one day they won't be around. And I still want the information. I don't want him to him or her to pass with that information locked up in that coffin. So I just want the information. And people don't realize that they stick around in titles, you know, other things I see people do. And it's, it works on both sides. It works on people use it, use a title to try, try to frame their self. Like one that irks my nerves is people that work at banks. I don't care the position. They work at banks and then they want to say, well, I work at, you could put any bank name in that spot. I work at the bank. And usually they don't say they title because most of them usually cashiers or tellers or something. But I work at a bank, so this is how it works. And they think that just because you work at a bank, you know something. But they try to use that title to influence what their decision is. Um, I remember when I first started talking about finance, I didn't have a degree in finance. and But I was out there doing the work. I'm on the ground. I'm trading. I'm investing. I'm doing all this stuff. And people would always hit me. Well, what degree do you have? I don't have a degree. And then you can see they instantly go blank. Like, oh, well, he don't have a degree. And then he don't know what he's talking about. Just a title. Just to have a BS, M MBA, uh, PhD behind your name. It, I guess that gave more credence to it. You know, just like going to your real estate things. Oh, I got a real estate license. Oh, I'll call that. <laughs> the people, the people, most people who got <laughs> degrees in finance are broke. Right. But to appease the people, I, I ain't going to say wasted. But I spent time getting a four-year degree. Of course, I got the degree in 18 months because I wasn't about to sit around four years wasting my time. I got the degree in 18 months. But the investment message didn't change. The investment philosophies that I had before didn't change. School didn't teach me nothing. They taught me how, hey, if you want to be an employee, if you want to be an employee of a company, you can get this position. But they told me not, taught me nothing about how can I build my own network up going into getting a degree in the finance but people look into that and say oh he got this title he got this title so people use the title to emphasize their point when they really don't know nothing and that's what people do people want to throw a title in front of their name to take drive home the point but the truth is if you need a title to drive home the point then you really don't have nothing you don't hear warren buffett say well i am warren buffett i'm a billionaire and i'm the ceo of berkshire hathaway he just give the information. You don't have to drive it home with something special. He's very pragmatic. And that's what most people with money, they're very pragmatic. They don't look into the emotional side. They just look at what makes sense. And the people that's going out there doing it will make you more money, talking to the viewers, will make you more money than somebody who just has a title attached to their name. Yeah, with, um, with titles, I remember one time, and this was years ago, but I had mentioned to you, that I wanted to reach, I forgot what position in my department or whatever. And you had simply just said, why are you trying to climb the ladder when you can create your own ladder? And like, I never, never even like thought of that way of thinking. I didn't have that mindset. And then, but it clicked. I was like, I was like, there's a lot of logic to that statement. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of sense to that. And the reality is like a title in a company or whatever, you're so lim you're only limited or you're so limited to just what that position can give you under that company, under what that company makes, their standards for what you can make as a salary. Whereas if you create your own ladder, if you create, if you hang around like-minded people, and absorb that information and you take your own path there is no limit as to how much you can earn how much you can make and what you can achieve but in a company setting if you're so focused on just titles then you're very limited i mean i think even with real estate agents like 
there's only so many commissions you can get. It depends on your performance as the realtor to get those clients or whatever. And in these days, people are realizing more and more that they don't need realtors. And in a real estate investor setting, your limit is the inventory in the entire United States. So, I mean, so there is really little to no limit for you as the, or not even the United States, really. I mean, you can expand and go into different countries. But just as the real estate agent, they're like, I mean, they're limited to that state. They're not even, they can't even go across the whole U.S. They have to get licenses in those states. So the titles really don't matter. It's in my view, it's the it's the work that you put in and what you've accomplished. And, and yeah, Alex, those are perfect examples. Uh, and when I told you to build your own ladder and that's that's just something I looked at. Why sit there and fight the corporate race when you can do more? I mean, with the assistance of your job, you can do more, you know, by yourself than trying to bang your head up against the corporate ladder. Instead of doing eight hours, you're doing, you know, 14, 15 hours of work that, you know, most of the time won't even get appreciated. You know, maybe you get the next promotion. Maybe you get the next, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 going up. But if you spent your time creating your own income, building your own ladder, you'll be able to do more, make more with, you know, doing less than the work. Because remember, with a job, the only way you make money is if you keep going back and doing the work, putting in the 40, 50, 60 hours a week with investing, with build, building stuff like companies. Once it's built, you make money sitting in your drawers, uh, watching Paw Patrol and eating cereal in the morning. That's, that's what building your own ladder looks like. Um, like uh, we talked about this before. I remember I was sitting in a meeting and it's, you know, head honchos in there or whatever. You know, they got the high, the high, high six figure jobs. And a guy leaned in because, you know, I talked to him about investing, and just talked about portfolio building and things like that. And he leaned in to me and was like, hey, how do it feel to be the richest guy in the room right now and nobody knows? And I just looked at him and I smiled like, nobody needs to know. I mean, of course, everybody's going to look up to those titles that they have. But at the end of the day, those people that's in those positions, they have to come in and do that 50, 60 hours a week to maintain that income. Me, I can leave at any second and still make the income that I'm making. So that's the that's the thing with titles. People get enamored with the titles, but the titles is just nothing. And on the inverse side of that, the people that hold those titles, they think people should respect them because they hold a title. I heard in an interview, a guy said, you're just a placeholder for a title. People get too full of themselves because they have these titles next to their name that they don't forget. You can be replaced just like an expert. You can be replaced. You're just, you're just a placeholder for that title. So you better get everything you can while you have that title and build it for your family after the fact, because it's going to be somebody that's going to replace you and you're going to be forgotten about. So you don't want your life goals, and I don't care what position you have in a company, you don't want your life to be based on the dependence of somebody else putting money in your pocket. Your dependence should be based on you putting money in your own pocket. And Alex, like you said perfectly, building your own ladder instead of trying to climb a corporate ladder. There's nothing wrong with working and making income, but you should be have another ladder where you're trying to, you know, make more after it's all said and done. Because Social Security, 401ks and all those things are not going to help you. With all that being said, guys, hope this left you with something to think on and two different perspectives. But please leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and then we'll see you guys on the next one.